Hello, it's me. It's another weekly reading vlog. I'm currently reading Denial by Peter James. Uh, I'm coming up for halfway through and we'll probably finish it tomorrow, I think. Um, and then I might pick up some Richard Branson, his autobiography. I've also got Hard Times as my bedtime book, but I haven't read it for a few nights in a row. Um, I've just been working until I've been exhausted and then like passing out. So, so that's what's new. Hello, it is Tuesday, May the 26th. Feeling a bit stressed and stuff, to be honest, not gonna lie, but it'd be reet. Uh, couldn't sleep last night, and so I think I finally got to sleep about 9 a.m. But I did at least do loads of work, so that's good. I'm actually down to currently, I have seven jobs on my list. And um, I think I could conceivably be down to about four by tomorrow, which might mean I can take a day off, which would be, because like, I'm earning money, so that's good. It's just, at the moment, I would trade the money for just a day of doing nothing, you know. Uh, I'm currently making baklava. There's gonna be a video of that up on Dane's vegan journey, so keep your eyes peeled for that on my uh, second YouTube channel. Uh, oh, actually, speaking of which, I need to release some videos as well. Biggie is outside in the porch in his tent. I can hear him jingling. Oh, I went outside earlier into the car park, um, and I saw a cat, a cat I've never seen before, and going into this little sheddy bit. So I've tried to get the footage off my phone of looking inside, because there was some weird shit in there, like old VHS tapes and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know, a bit of a weird place. Yeah, I'm currently reading Denial by Peter James. Um, nearly finished, I'll probably finish it tonight, so that's good. And then next up, I think I'm going to read Black Sunday by Thomas Harris. We'll see. Um, I'm going to give it a chance anyway, because this is the point now. I've ran out of what I would consider, like, main books to read, so everything is what I would call a bedtime book. Uh, so... I'm basically going back through the big list of my bedtime books again, trying them all out, seeing if I'm more in the mood for them now than I was back in the day or whatever, um, and just trying to find some more books to read, because after, after this one, I'm down to 31 books remaining. Um, I'm a little bit past halfway on uh, Hard Times by Charles Dickens as well, so um, so there's that. And I'm, oh, I've been watching Prison Break, I've been re-watching that, and once I finish that, I think I'm going to start next month's audio book as well, so that should be good. Yeah. Oh, and I finally managed to get a delivery slot for some delivery groceries. So I'm going to have an Asda shop, which they're owned by Walmart for you Americans. It's basically like a Walmart delivery shop. Um, but I think last time I spent like 130 quid and stocked up on everything. So I'm going to do that again. And actually they've lifted some of their rules now because for a while it was a maximum of three of any item. And now it's a maximum of 10. So I can get like, shall I get 180 beers? I could because I've got because I've been working so hard, I've got money, so and and then I can use that money to stock up on stuff, so that then I don't have to worry about money as much in the future, you know? I don't know, whatever, whatever, I'm, I'm a bit mental. I was supposed to be going to meet somebody today as well, but I didn't because I woke up late, so I think we're gonna go and do that tomorrow instead. That should be nice, I'm sure we'll have a few beers. Uh, it should be nice to see another person, really. All right, I've gotta go back to this because my baklava's ready for me to take back over. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, I'm wearing my Who the Fuck is Jordana Blake t-shirt. She is a local singer-songwriter. It's my limited ed edition t-shirt, I guess. Hello, Biggie. Um, what day is it? It's Friday. Um, yesterday, I went for a few drinks and little mini pizzas um, with someone, so that was nice. Although I did, I think I've tried to put the footage in the vlog, but we did. There was a, a man who was shouting abuse at some Polish people because they were smoking cigarettes outside and the smoke was going into his flat. Which, fair enough, is annoying, but there's no reason to tell people to go back home, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that's happened. I finished re-watching Prison Break as well. Um, had some posts today, so my mum sent me some stuff, like early birthday presents, basically, because obviously what we coronavirus and stuff, I'm not going to get to see her on my birthday. So um, she just posted some stuff and she wanted to get it at, like order it early rather than late just to make sure it arrived. So she sent me um, Abbey Road on vinyl by the Beatles, which is great, one of my favourite albums there. So, And I've al already got Sgt Pepper as well, so that's cool. Um, and in fact I did a little cover of um, a Beatles song, which I might as well put in here, um, called Her Majesty, which is like a hidden track on Abbey Road. Uh, she also got me she got me this, If It Bleeds by Stephen King, his new, uh, I think it's four novellas. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this. Obviously I have to haul that. I've got a bunch of books to haul actually, a few things came in the post. Um, and she also got me a Build Your Own Ukulele kit as well, which is very exciting. 
Currently just sat here watching Fail Army. Well, I'm catching back up on my watch playlist on YouTube. So I've got like, yeah, I've got 35 videos on it because basically I've just been binging on Prison Break to get through to that. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go back to a few Netflixy things and I've got an audio book. And then I think I'm going to re-watch um, Game of Thrones. I know it's like a hell of an undertaking, but what else is there to do? Uh, I've also hit about 62,000 words on my work in progress, um, Monsters of Rock as well, because that's very exciting. In terms of reading, I finished reading Black Sunday by um, Robert Harris, so he's the guy who wrote the Hannibal books. It was okay, it was basically about this plot to blow up the Super Bowl by putting like this big explosive thing under one of the blimps that was flying over the top of it. Um, but because it was like very terrorism linked, but it was talking about things like the Munich uh, Olympic attack and things like that. And obviously, as a modern reader, the iconic terrorism moment of all of our lifetimes was September the 11th, you know? So, um, yeah, a bit odd reading a book that talks about ter terrorism that doesn't talk about that. I mean, obviously, it was, it was published in 1975. I don't think it particularly holds up well. It was pretty easy to read, and I did whiz through it, but it just wasn't that gripping or interesting. I mean, I suppose... It's kind of a sort of political thriller as well, or I guess it's meant to be, which isn't really my cup of tea. So I gave that like a 2.75, maybe 3 out of 5. Yeah. Um, and then, then I read How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. Uh, odd time of year to read it, I know. I picked it up because I've been getting my friends to pick random numbers off a list of, um, like, all the books that I want to read or whatever. And, um, yeah, they picked the number that corresponded to this, so... You know, I ended up reading it, and I'm glad I did. Um, obviously, Dr. Seuss is iconic, you know, and um, yeah, I've read like a bunch of Dr. Seuss books, but I've never read this one, so it's nice to slowly be ticking them off. Uh, so I gave that like a probably a four out of five, it was pretty good actually, especially for a kids' book. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and now I am reading. Now I am reading Wilt Haven by Ollie Jacobs. Um, yeah, this is like. Well, the BPD, which is this, about, this is based on, it's the Bureau of Paranormal Detectives, I think it stands for. And Wilt Haven is basically this, like, quaint English town, except it's also got these Lovecraftian monsters, and it may or may not exist. And this is almost, if you've read Illuminate, it's kind of similar in style to that, in that it brings together all of these different, like, official reports and stuff um, about, you know, about Wilt Haven and all these various sightings. It's actually got, a, like, a novel within this as well. It's like somebody's memoir as well, but it's like a book within a book, which um, I've seen done before, like for example, Stephen King did that in Misery with Paul Sheldon's book, and I didn't think it really added much to it, whereas it makes total sense here, it works really well in context, because this is supposed to be a file of all of the paperwork they have on it, so if somebody wrote their own little memoir, it would make sense to have that within this, you know, whereas with King's, um, with Paul Sheldon writing the novels, it just took me out of the story, really. So yeah, I think he's done pretty well with this. I mean, as I say, I kind of compared it to Illuminate, but I DNF'd Illuminate because I didn't think it was very good. Whereas this one, uh, I'm currently about 100 pages in it and I'll be doing a full review of it. It's also his latest book as well, but it's very good so far. So I'm stoked to see more. So that's where we're at. So I'm probably going to sit here and watch some more Fail Army, eat some, eat some mini pizzas. Oh yeah, and I'm super excited because everyone in the UK at the moment is talking about the Premier League, the football, the soccer to you Americans. The soccer is coming back. Nobody's talking about the fact that the first televised sport to come back is actually going to be the snooker. The um, I think it's the World Championships starting on June the 1st and I fucking love snooker. I don't like any other sport but snooker I really enjoy. I actually watch a bunch of YouTube channels that will do like the highlight videos and you know there's one, a really great one actually called Break From Life. Um, definitely check it out if you're even vaguely interested in Q sports. Like even if you play pool, you'll learn stuff. But like you know, he'll do a lot of trick shots and stuff. But he also does a lot of these like videos where he'll recreate the shot of the championship and stuff. So I'm stoked. Really good new content coming soon for me. I am making a little cheeky little burger hash with Beyond Burger. So it's onion, mushroom, a little bit of chili, red pepper and Beyond Burger, and then it's going to have some tomato ketchup and a few other bits in there. That is so cute. Hello, I don't know if I've updated you today. I don't think I have, have I? It is Saturday the 30th of May, 
Um, I've been being productive, been doing some work. Um, I've just been editing some videos. So I've been um, responding to some comments on my last video where I was like, oh, like today I had like three negative comments from random people or whatever. They happen all the time these days. I don't know whether people have got like a shorter fuse because of coronavirus as well. Like I would say it's gone from one or two negative comments a week to an average of one a day. Um, but like, yeah, there was a day last week when I had like three on one week. But um, this one's just, <laughs> I've, I've upset somebody. He's called Nigel Timms. He has a fierce mustache. Uh, he doesn't like my um, Robert Louis Stevenson Treasure Island review. I can't remember what I gave it. I think I gave it like a 3 out of 5. I mean, I would still stand by it. It's not a very good book. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and funny, he mentions the movie recommendations. I'm going to read his comment in a second. But it's one of those books where it's, it's better as a movie, you know? Because you can kind of cut all the rubbish. And then, like, I don't know. I just Stevenson isn't a particularly good writer as well. Like... For example, I would compare something like Treasure Island to, say, Robinson Crusoe, where Robinson Crusoe is much slower paced and has, like, less of a storyline to it, but it's so well written and just so gripping and such a great book, whereas for me, and, and this is the point, for me, it's, it's a review at the end of the day, people are free to, to, to argue, um, Treasure Island just, it, it just wasn't good, it didn't, it wasn't a very good novel, you know? Um, and, I mean, I think as well, you've got to be fair with, like, classics, like, so the way I see it is that today we know so much more in terms of a lot of the research that has been done, even like, you know, we know things, we talk about things like tropes and stuff, we have like a wider variety of influences to draw from, so um, I think in a way it's easier for modern writers to just be like a proficient level of writing, you know, um, and to be able to just, just to be able to write a paragraph in a way that doesn't make you want to fall asleep while you're reading it. And, um, and I think that's an advantage that modern writers have over classic writers. And so I think when you read classics, you have to, to a certain extent, you have to expect a little bit of bad writing, you know, <laughs> um, just by its nature. And also by the fact that language has changed too. But, um, you know, again, it's all subjective. But yeah, so this guy, he says, um, all right, what's he saying? What are you saying, Nigel? I read this book as a class book at school. Terrible capitalization, by the way. Uh, at the tender age of 11. It totally captivated me, and now at the more senior age of 66, I still remember the storyline, the characters in the pub, unlike you, which was the Admiral Bembo Inn. Your book summary is limp, boring, insulting to the author, and childishly sarcastic. This is wonderful story that is totally lost on someone like you. A wonderful book. Guess that poor old Robbie must have been a rubbish writer then. Why did they make it into a film? What a waste of money. Old people shouldn't be allowed on the internet, man. They just shouldn't be allowed on the internet. <laughs> um... But, I mean, I don't know, it's kind of annoyed me, because it's just never nice to get comments like that, you know. But also, it has kind of made me laugh, too, so there is that. Uh, in terms of filming and, oh, reading, I'm still reading Wilthaven. I've just got to a bit where my photo's in it, actually. It was on a poster for, like, an old band, so this is, like, a found novel. So get ready to rock with Tekela Lee. Uh, you can't really see it. I mean, it's deliberately distorted image anyway, and it's a really old photo of me. Uh, it's, it's me when I had, like, short hair, and I, uh, well, my work made me get my hair cut. Um, basically, oh, focus on the sofa there. Basically, um, my hair was just like this. Um, I mean, to be fair, I didn't have the beard, which I think kind of offs offsets it. I don't know what's going on with the autofocus. Um, but yeah, at two different jobs, they both told me I had to have my hair cut short. Um, and like both of them, it was a verbal warming, uh, verbal war like global warming, uh, essentially. Someone's having a barbecue, I can smell it. But yeah, um, so that was when I used to have short hair because of that. And um, I don't really like that photo. It's actually from the launch night of my first book, No Rest for the Wicked, which kind of makes it apt for this, which is like very um, Lovecraftian. But um, yeah, I don't mind as well because it's kind of super distorted. But also in the in the context of the story, it's meant to be for like a band promo photo. And so it makes more sense. I mean, you can't obviously see it in the distorted image, but where that was taken, that was at uh, the art centre down there where I almost got a job but didn't. But that's another story. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they have like an old converted church in there. So I had my launch party in there and was doing like poems from the pulpit into a microphone. So that's where that's from. But yes, I'm still reading Wilthaven and cracking on with that. Um, I need to do my review for it actually in a minute. Don't have any new books to haul, do I? What came in the post today? Oh yeah, this came in the post today. Um, my mum got me a Nexus 7, because it was only about 25 quid, I think. Um, and um, so I'm going to get like a hard, a hard case for it. And the goal is just, I'm literally just going to use it for guitar tabs. So I've got Dropbox 
and um, so I'll get a case for it and then you can just drop it in a music stand you know and um, it's just much more efficient and better for the environment than my current system of cheat sheets and like it means if somebody's there and they say can you do so and so I don't have to say well I don't have the cheat sheet on me um, so I just need to make sure I can find a way to stop it from tur turning off uh, automatically but I think there is a way and there is also certain apps that have it like programmed into them so um, yeah I just have to it may it may be that I can't use Dropbox for it and that I have to use a different app um, that does have this like override in it but we'll see so I think that's where we're at and I'm gonna go and play some music this evening as well fun times oh and I need to record my next radio show I've done the interview for it um, which is pretty good I got a poet called uh, Mervyn Cook so um, yeah so I just need to edit the actual show together Oh, it's a bit hot, isn't it? It's uh, Sunday, it's 5pm. Um, may do a live stream at 7. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. I've been just being productive so far today. Um, but that's good because I've got most of the stuff on my personal to-do list done. Um, including like most of my cleaning and tidying and stuff. Um, and so I've been cracking on with my writing as well. So I've hit like 62,000 words now, I think, on uh, Monsters of Rock. And then, what else have I been doing? Uh, I finished reading Ollie Jacobs' book, uh, Wilt Haven, which was marvellous. I gave it a 4.25 out of 5. Uh, cracking little indie book. A review to come soon. Basically, it's like Lovecraftian little English villages that may or may not exist. It's very strange, but also very amusing. And uh, pretty well done as well, I thought. So now I'm reading The Bridge by Ian Banks, which is also very strange so far. It's kind of, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm trying to read the blurb to give me some clues here. All I can think about is like weird, surrealist at times, quite humorous, with a bit of sci-fi in. Uh, the blurb is, A man lies in a coma after a near-fatal accident. His body broken, his memory vanished. He finds himself in the surreal world of the bridge. A world free of the usual constraints of time and space. A world where dream and fantasy, past and future, fuse. Who is this man? Where is he? Is he more dead than alive? Or has he never been so alive before? And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, it hasn't got the best reviews from my friends online. I'm not gonna, be, not gonna lie, but um, yeah, for what it's worth, I've been enjoying it so far. I don't like, as a general rule, like uh, amnesia used as a plot device, but I guess it makes sense for this. I mean, I'm only 40 pages in. I only started it today as well, so maybe I'll change my mind by the time I get to the end. It also means I'm back on 33 books currently reading, and I think I have three more on their way to, the, to me, including a few which are going to be kind of chunkers. So, <laughs> I'm not doing myself any favours here, but um, I'm about three quarters of the way through Hard Times, which is my current bedtime book. So there's that. So yeah, I'm a bit hay fevery today as well. Oh well. So uh, yeah, I'll have to do a few other bits of filming and carry on working, and then maybe later I'll do this live stream. We'll see. Watch this back. We're watching Snowpiercer, aren't we, Biggie? Aren't we? Daddy's got a coffee. This has been microwaved twice. Oops. He's come to have a sit, haven't you, Biggs? Come to have a sit on my packages. That's a Jamiroquai album, a vinyl that I bought for a pound in a charity shop and somebody bought for £20 on eBay. It's Monday. I am so tired, man. Um, let's think. Hey, don't scratch me. I did my live stream yesterday. Oh, that's why he's going for the, the camera's got this little thing that you wrap around your wrist. And he's trying to play with it. Um, I did my live stream yesterday, so that was nice. Um, and, um, yeah, then... I, oh, sorry, my mind... I'm so tired. I can't, I can't make sense of anything. Did some laundry today. My housework is actually all done now. Uh, I've also been finishing off tomorrow's radio show. I keep leaving it super late and then stressing about it. So um, I'm probably going to try and pre-record the next one a little bit earlier. Um, and I've got an interview scheduled for Wednesday for it. So yeah, I'm going to try and get it done earlier next time so I have less to worry about. Because I keep doing this. I keep leaving it till like the day before. And like I was supposed to be going for like, a, I don't know, for like for dinner with somebody. Uh, like a socially distanced dinner. But um um, that's not happening because I had to finish my radio show. Biggie's cleaning himself and it's very cute, but he stopped now because he heard his name. Is that good, Biggie? Yes. So it's nice to have a bath. Lovely. 
you're gonna have hairballs later aren't you um so yeah so that's where i'm at the moment uh i have been reading well i've been reading the bridge by ian banks which is quite good um this is a book that was given to me the only problem with it is that there are some sections in scottish dialect and um let's just say i think irving welsh did it better so I've not been enjoying those as much. So I've been kind of switching it out as a bedtime book when we get to these like, Scottish dialect parts. Um, partly because they don't really progress the story that much as well. I mean, it is a very loose storyline to begin with. Um, very world buildy Actually, it does remind me quite a lot of Snowpiercer in that, you know, the bridge is basically Snowpiercer, ex except instead of a train, it's a bridge. Um, Obviously, there are a lot more differences in that as well, but yeah, it's enjoyable enough so far. It's quite experimental, so I would say it's like almost like literary sci-fi, I guess. Um, there have been a few questions it's raised that I've enjoyed, but mostly I've been enjoying like bits of the dialogue. And there's this uh, one character who um, keeps going to uh, the he's going to a therapist because he th he thinks he's a different piece of furniture every day, and he has to be uh, kept under police guard because sometimes he thinks he's a women's bee day and apparently he can be very insistent so i'm reading that and then i'm also I'm finishing off hard times i think i'm on page 160 of 230 or something as my bedtime book and then i'm also reading uh we can remember it for you wholesale volume five of philip k dick's collected stories uh, and the weird thing about that is that volume two is also called We Can Remember It For You Wholesale. And I think I've already read We Can Remember It For You Wholesale as well. It, um, it's one of the ones that one of the movies that, that's based on his work is, is based on, but I can't remember which movie it is uh, off the top of my head. I haven't got to it yet in the collection, so I haven't really needed to to think about it. But the stories I have read so far, I have enjoyed it. Um, they're quite good in terms of give you a lot of like, Again, food for thought and a lot of these philosophical questions. A lot of them more relevant now than before, like things with AI and stuff like that. Um, one of them is just daft, like these aliens come along and they're two feet tall and then they have a cigarette and it makes them four feet tall. And then they have uh, some whiskey and it makes them six feet tall. And everyone's panicking, being like, they're the same height as us now. Like we used to think they were these little tiny cute aliens and now they're the same height as us. Let's just hope they don't get any bigger. And then, uh, and then the alien meets a woman. And then uh, they go they go away for a little bit and then and then they come back and the woman looks very happy and the alien's eight feet tall. So, yeah. I mean, it was written in like 1950 as well, but I don't know. That That's not really that offensive in the 2020 era, right? I mean, it was it was a well-written little story, I thought, really, and it was just playful, a lot of, lot of humour. So, so far, we're looking at probably like 3.25 out of 5 for the bridge, which is a shame because it would have been a 3.75 without the Scots dialect bits. Um, and then the Philip K. Dick store is a solid 4 out of 5 so far. But yeah, that brings me to the end of another weekly reading vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.